Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are revisiting the battle between the Ryzen 7 2700X and Core i7 8700K with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Now, later this week, I will be reviewing the Core i9 900K and 9700K for the first time. But before we check out those new 8-core Coffee Lake refresh parts, I wanted to do a refresher with the 8700K and 2700X. Now, you might think this video is a bit poorly timed, but there are a few things I wanted to explore before we jump into testing the 9th gen core series processors. To date, all of our CPU data has been collected with the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which is uh, all good and well, but with the 9th gen processors, we will be moving on to testing exclusively with the RTX 2080 Ti, as that is now the fastest gaming GPU available, and we always test CPU gaming performance with the fastest GPU available. I've already invested quite a bit of time and effort into this testing. Uh, having said that though, you may be a little surprised to learn that we are only testing with 10 games in this video and for our initial 9th gen coverage. Of course, I will no doubt add more titles to the format in the coming weeks, but for a day one review, uh, just going over 10 titles, uh, let alone testing them, uh, is a big job and I don't think too many people want to sit through a 30 minute video of game breakdowns. I know some of you Harbour Unbox fans will, but for the day one review, I want to cover things other than just games. So 10 games is more than enough. Anyway, for this battle between the 8700K and 2700X, we have 10 games that we've selected for the upcoming 9900K and 9700K review. Although I'm using the mighty RTX 2080 Ti, I'll be showing scaling performance by testing at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. This will give you a good idea of how these CPUs compare under realistic gaming conditions, as well as non-GPU limited scenarios. Also, please note for this test, I'm not using tuned secondary timings for the 2700X. Instead, both processors have been tested using Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 3200CL14 memory with the XMP loaded. The cooler of choice is the Corsair Hydro Series H100i Pro, and for now we are just looking at stock CPU results. For the most part, we've found overclocking leads to similar performance gains for each CPU, so don't expect any noteworthy changes there, especially when going beyond 1080p. Other than that, everything else is up to date. The games, the data, Windows 10, display and system drivers. I think that's about everything, so let's jump into the results. First up, we have Assassin's Creed Origins, and in a moment, we will check out the more recently released Odyssey. So here we see the 8700K allowed for 12% more frames on average at 1080p, 13% at 1440p, and then 8% at 4K. I was quite shocked to see a measurable performance difference at 4K. That said, Origins has always run uh, a bit unusually on the Ryzen processors. This time when testing with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we are using the Harbour Unboxed optimized quality settings. For a full breakdown of the settings used, please watch Tim's guide. Here we find slightly different performance trends. Here the 8700K was 21% faster on average at 1080p, but just 6% faster when comparing the frame time performance. So although the Intel CPU provided a much higher average frame rate, the overall experience ended up looking and feeling much the same. The margin did close up to just 6% at 1440p, though oddly this time the 1% low result was 14% greater with the 8700K. Then finally at 4K, as we'd normally expect to find, there's no real differences between the two CPUs. Moving on to Battlefield 1, and here the 8700K was 12% faster on average at 1080p and 1440p, while we again see no difference in performance at the 4K resolution. Previously we found the 8700K to be 8% faster at 1080p using the GTX 1080 Ti, so the margins have only increased ever so slightly with the RTX 2080 Ti. It appears that the 2700X and even the 8700K are limiting the RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p, so it will be very interesting to see how much more headroom there is on offer here with the 9900K. Of course, we can still overclock, but at the stock speeds, the current gen parts need to be tested at 1440p to avoid limiting GPU performance. F1 2018 is a reasonably CPU intensive title, and although the 8700K allowed for 10% more frames on average, and a 12% boost to the 1% low result, with the 2700X we were able to keep frame rates well over 100 FPS at all times. So it wasn't exactly easy to spot the difference between these two CPUs. Then at 1440p there's no differentiating between the two, as the 8700K was just 4% faster. Once again, by the time we reach the 4K resolution, both CPUs are enabling the same level of performance with the RTX 2080 Ti, which saw over 100 FPS at all times. 
Now, testing with Project Cars 2 shows very CPU limited results at 1080p, and we also see much the same at 1440p. Here the 8700K enabled slightly higher average frame rate performance, while the 2700X enabled slightly better frame time performance. Moving to 4K, any difference in CPU performance is completely removed from the equation, and now we see the same frame time and average frame rate results. Performance in Star Wars Battlefront 2 was very competitive, here the 8700K offered 8% and more performance at 1080p, and just 4% at 1440p. Then at 4K we see exactly the same 76 FPS on average, provided by both configurations. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here we again find competitive results. The 8700K was just 7% faster at 1080p and 5% faster at 1440p, though it was 9% faster when comparing the frame time data. Of course, as we've seen time and time again, for those playing at 4K, there appears to be no real performance difference between these two CPUs. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider results are quite interesting. The 8700K runs away with it for the average frame rate at 1080p, allowing for 26% more frames on average. And yet despite that, the frame time performance was just 9% higher. The margin of course closes up at 1440p, and now we see just a 5% performance advantage in favor of the Intel CPU. And then we see the exact same performance at the 4K resolution. So fair to say under realistic gaming conditions, you can expect to find very similar performance from both these CPUs with the RTX 2080 Ti. Here we see when testing Hitman with the preferred DX12 API that the 2700X limits performance to around 80 FPS, whereas the 8700K allowed the RTX 2080 Ti to push up to around 100 FPS. And this can be seen at both 1080p and 1440p. Even at 4K, the 8700K enjoyed a 6% performance advantage when looking at the average frame rate. So while Ryzen does okay here, the Core i7 processor is clearly superior in this title. Finally, we have Forza Horizon 4, which isn't a particularly CPU demanding title, it has to be said, but I've included it nonetheless to show the kind of performance margins you can expect to see in a well-made modern title that's mostly GPU bound. As you can see, nothing particularly exciting here on the CPU front. The 2700X matched the 8700K, or at least roughly matched it at all three resolutions. Okay, so here's the 10 game average. The 8700K was 10% faster at 1080p, 8% faster at 1440p, and just 2% faster at 4K. Uh, basically anything within a 5% margin really is too close to call. Anyway, as we're all well aware at this point, the 8700K is the superior gaming CPU. It's just not necessarily superior in terms of value. I was really expecting Intel to run away with it more than they did in this comparison with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. Of course, this is a limited sample, and while I do plan to create one of those 30 plus game comparisons uh, between not just these CPUs, but also the upcoming uh, ninth gen models, and hopefully I'll get that done within the next month or so, I think that will only extend the margin by a few extra percent because, you know, older games or less optimized games, let's say, are such as CSGO, PUBG and GTA 5, just to name a few, but there's, there'll be a few other ones. They tend to favor the blue team a little bit more than what we've seen on average here. I'm assuming a good 99% of all RTX 2080 Ti owners will be gaming at no less than 1440p, with most targeting 4K. That being the case, at the same price, I'd probably grab the Core i7 8700K every time. It's unquestionably the better gaming CPU right now and will likely remain so for the next few years. However, right now it costs roughly $370 to $390 US depending on where you shop. Here in Australia, it's more like $590. Meanwhile, the 2700X costs just $295 US or $470 Aussie, and that makes it 20% cheaper. Motherboard prices are quite similar. You're looking at around $140 US for the exceptionally good MSI B450 Gaming Pro Carbon, while a similar quality Z370 board will cost around $150 to $170 US. Then there's also the matter of the cooler. The Wraith Prism is a decent box cooler, uh, it's certainly better than anything I can recall Intel shipping with their CPUs, and you will see similar performance to what was shown in this video when using the Wraith Prism. The 2700X only runs about 100 megahertz faster with a better cooler like the Corsair Hydro Series H100i Pro that we used in this video. A cheap air cooler for the 8700K will cost around $30 US, so you're looking at spending about $130 US more on the Intel build, which frankly overall really isn't a huge price difference. But then it has to be said, you're also really seeing no performance increase for that extra investment. The extra cores of the Ryzen CPU generally make it better for heavy productivity tasks, but that's not always the case. So 
make sure you check out performance in the applications you'll be mostly using. Overall, again, it's a close battle with the RTX 2080 Ti, and the result isn't that different to what we saw with the 1080 Ti back in July. At the time, I compared both CPUs in 35 games using the 1080 Ti, and at the end of it, I admitted that I was torn on which way I'd go, noting that at the time, they're both very appealing, so I guess it's somewhat of a high-class problem. At the time, I didn't feel for gaming that the two extra cores of the 2700X would see it nudge ahead of the 8700K, uh, at least within the next few years. And since then, I have done a few benchmarks that explore this, and that certainly does seem to be the case. I did also say, though, that the allure of that glorious 5 gigahertz uh, 8700K overclock would probably suck me in. I also noted at the time that it really is a tough choice picking between these two CPUs purely for gaming performance. But if you are just gaming at the time, I, I suggested that I would lean towards the Core i7 processor. My opinion hasn't changed too much, but today with increased pricing uh, for the 8700K due to supply shortages and whatever other reasons, uh, but yeah, due to those increased prices, I'd probably lean more towards the Ryzen 7 2700X now. Still a close one, but yeah, I don't know if I'd spend the extra money on the 8700K now. It was always more expensive, now it's just a fair bit more expensive. And that being said though, let me know which CPU you'd choose and why. As always, I look forward to discussing this with you guys in the comment section below. And that is going to do it for this one, at least for now. I'm keen to pick this up again when we get the 900K and the 9700K and a few other 9th gen core processors later in the week. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and if you appreciate the work we do at Hiram Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. You will gain access to our private Discord chat where you can ask Tim and I questions directly at any time of the day, and we usually get onto them pretty quickly. We're also in there just generally chatting with our community. It's, it's really great stuff. And we also do a monthly live stream. Actually, we do two monthly live streams now, and they're also a lot of fun, and we'll just answer your questions live. Uh, doing that and yeah, discuss any news topics or things that uh, Patreon members would like us to discuss. Anyway, if you do want to join our Patreon account, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. As always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.